There we are. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the wellness webinar. I am Elaine Pauly, the president of MagnaWave, and joining me is Dr. Amanda Myers. Um, how are you, Dr. Myers? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Where are you today? I am actually visiting Colorado. So a little break in between work runs for me, which was nice. So a awesome. little snow, a little cold. It's been beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's great. I um, Colorado is one of those places that they like the winter. They do. Yeah. And it's it's a nice winter. It's not like really wet. So it's that even though you get snow, you can, you know, be in a regular jacket and outside and not be freezing, which is nice. So yeah. totally different than a lot of what the winters that I am used to having. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've never been there, but I, I have I have aspirations to go. So that's wonderful. Uh, Dr. Myers is joining us from Colorado. I am in Kentucky. Please tell us where you are. You can, you know, leave a comment. Um, underneath this video or if you're on YouTube or Facebook or wherever, if you're on the website, um, you can leave a comment and we would be happy to answer your questions. One of the big things we're going to talk about today is, you know, holidays. Oh, hello from Arizona. Hi, Samantha. Everybody tell us where you're from. Uh, we're going to be doing some giveaways today. So um, the more you interact with us, the more chances that you get um, entered to win one of those very cool prizes. So tell us where you're from and, and ask some questions. We want to hear from you. But one of the, the big topics that everybody's talking about right now is health and the holidays. It's not a regular flu season. It is not like any holiday season we've ever seen. I will tell you this in the spring when all this started happening, if you would have told me I would be worried about Thanksgiving and Christmas with my family, I would have thought you were crazy. Uh, many schools here in Kentucky and Louisville, the public schools are still not back in classroom. Um, and have not gone back since the original shutoff uh, in the spring. So um, it's, it's crazy. So I'm going to say hi to Michael Melvin in South Dakota. We got Heather in Arkansas, Norma in Kansas, Joyce in Ohio, Carrie in Alberta, Canada, Jeff in Northeast Ohio, and Lee in Arizona. So wow. Okay. We got people everywhere. Wow. So tell me what you think about the holidays. Like what are your plans? What do you think people should be doing? in terms of visiting with their family and friends. Yeah, I mean, it's it's holiday time is always a traditional get together with either friends or family or both. You know, there's a lot of parties and merriment and it's it's hard to think that that won't be happening this season. I mean, I think we've had a lot of hard things happen throughout this year that have been new, different and arguably maybe not easy to navigate in the very beginning. And I feel like with this holiday, you've got to kind of keep buckled down. You really do have to be a little careful. This virus is still spreading. We see it in the news. It's the numbers are rising uh, all the time in different pockets. They are being overwhelmed. Uh, currently in El Paso, they're having trouble with their hospital system, being able to support uh, all of the individuals who need help. So it's still alive and well, I guess is the easiest way to say that. And on top of it, we have all of the routine wintertime colds and viruses that we always see on a yearly level. The flu was going to be here. The the little viruses that run around common cold creators like RSV and the pair influences and some of the other coronaviruses that we do see on a yearly basis, they're all going to be here. So it's going to be hard to know what you have. Uh, if you have cough, if you have congestion, runny nose, sore throats, those types of things, it can be any of them. So testing may become more of a relevant scenario, knowing what you've got to know kind of how you need to isolate or be careful. Uh, so I would say if you're going to have a gathering, you know, contemplate whether or not you want people to have negative tests before they show up. If they've been outside of your circle. Now, if you've, you know, been around the same group, you know, and, and you're kind of being careful outside of that circle, then those are individuals that are likely still very safe for you to connect with, see, spend time with that type of a thing. Um, you know, so it's going to be vigilance. It's going to be knowing who and where people have been, who they've been around, what they've been doing what their exposures are um, and whether they have any illness symptoms. So it's going to be a little bit more tasking just routinely. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, that you're, it's true. I mean, we're going to do um, like my in-laws have been, we've been seeing my, my in-laws the whole time. They live here in, in Kentucky and take care of my daughter, help me take care of the kids. And then my parents, I mean, that's about it. I mean, that's our, our big, we have family that's out of town in Evansville, Indiana. We have family in Memphis, Tennessee that, um, we're in Ohio, we're probably not going to be able to all get together because it's just that risk of everybody being in the same room from all the different areas. And then if I were to get somebody, 
it's, even if it was just a runny nose with me, or maybe I had no symptoms. Um, and I were, you know, we were to all get together and somebody in my family, like a grandparent, um, or a, an aunt or an uncle, or even, you know, a child were to get sick and be hospitalized. Um, it would be, I would be devastated for them. You know, I mean, right. we just don't know enough. And we, you know, my uncle had it very badly. He was hospitalized. Um, I've had friends and family that have had it. Um, they were living in Indiana. Um, and then I've also had people, I mean, we've had practitioners here in Magnaway that have lost their spouses and their family members to this disease. Um, and it's just illness and it's been rough. I mean, it really is like, there's a lot of people who don't think it's real. Um, I have found that the masks are, are a huge thing. I really think we should all be wearing masks. Keep your mask on. I know it's it's been po politicized, but it is just important to wear your mask. Keep it clean. Don't touch it. Wash your hands. And, you know, that's what they use at doctor's offices for a reason. That's what they use in the hospital for a reason. Not because it's, you know, foolproof, right? right. But a mask does help, correct? Yes. And I, I feel like, you know, we've had a lot of disinformation about the masks along the way, uh, which is unfortunate because I think it did become more political than it should have been. We should be just really grounded down into what keeps us healthy uh, and how do I, even if I'm unaware that I'm ill, how do I help someone else not have an exposure uh, that may be damaging to them? It may not hurt me at all. I might get this thing and it's a couple days of I don't feel great. You know what I mean? And I do fine. But if I encounter someone else who has a weak immune system or who is more elderly or who has a comorbidity that puts you at risk, you know, you just don't know how, what your impact will be for them. So just being smart about it. And, you know, the masks are there to help any type of droplet that comes out of my nose or mouth not get to the space where somebody else can be exposed to it. So if we're all doing that, you know, the studies are showing that we can reduce the risk of this spread by 70%. It's a big number, a number we have to pay attention to when we look at public health measures. And public health is exactly that. It's not your health, it's not my health, it's everyone's health. It is the public at large. So though that's what we're trying to participate with. Whether you think it's real or not, whether you really feel like you need to do it or not, you know, you, you, we need to be more careful for everyone, not just in our own political sort of state or in our own health kind of conscious mind. Because yeah. a lot of the people that are exposed to this virus who shed this virus, like 40% of them do not have a symptom. So you don't know that you're sick yet, and yet you're getting someone else sick being around them. And so it's a risk, you know, and it's a it's a moral thing. You've got to figure out whether that's a problem for you morally or whether that's not a problem for you morally and make a decision, you know. But I feel like if you had a risk factor or if you had a family member with a risk factor, uh, protecting them is a smart thing to do. You know? Sometimes you don't know if they have a risk factor. I mean, sometimes you don't know that your child may have something, especially like younger children that, that you know, you're not aware of it yet or that, you know, your neighbor who seems seemingly healthy has high blood pressure or asthma. Like you don't realize that um, some very healthy looking people are always, they have the underlying things that they may not even know they have yet or that they've been suffering with and dealing with and treating themselves. Like that's that's what's important. Um, we do have a question from Courtney. Uh, what are your thoughts on the vaccine they're saying is close to fruition? Say that one more time, I'm sorry. Uh, what are your thoughts on the vaccine they're saying that is close to okay. fruition? So the, the vaccine and the vaccine development has been very interesting and it's been very rapid fire. They're collapsing sort of the way that we have typically structured our vaccine development to try to escalate the timeline uh, to be able to get something out into the public. Um, <clears throat> I think we've got like 65 vaccines that are still somewhere in one, two or three phases of development. We have six that have completed all three of those phases and are looking to get some sort of approval uh, through whatever entity we decide is going to say, yes, they're safe and can be used. So whether that's the World Health Organization, the CDC, um, the NIH, or a combination, a board of these people who can work together to figure this out, uh, we're, we're in stages of, of sort of waiting. Most of the vaccines, the six that are done, um, do have somewhere between 90 and 70% effectiveness, which means that the vast majority of the time they will help your body defend against this virus. Um, we need 70% is kind of our low end of the margin. Uh, if we have less than that, we don't really feel like the vaccine is going to be very effective because we need everyone to take it in, in order to help protect everyone at large. Anyone who takes it, we need 70% of them to have an, an immune reaction to the vaccine that helps their body build a protection layer. 
a defense system, basically. So if we have fewer than 70% of the people who take the vaccine do that, then we don't find any real benefit at large. So at this point in the game, most of the vaccines that we have that are through the pipeline are demonstrating that level of efficacy. So, you know, we'll see. I, whether they get approved or not will be the interesting component. So if they are approved, you know, the next phase will be who gets them. Uh, and that's been the bigger debate is, you know, where do we put them first? Who do we vaccinate first? Who are, do we do risk groups? Do we do first responders? Do we distribute equally around the world? Or are we looking at, you know, countries that have pre-purchased doses? You know, it, it's a big ethics conversation that we're trying to sort of tease through all of the little fine details right now to figure out how we're going to be judiciously allocating um, the vaccines as they are available. So would you take the vaccine if it, when it becomes available? So, I mean, I feel like I'm a first, I'm, I'm on that first responder edge of the world. And of course, we've had a lot of the healthcare industry succumb to this illness and die from it, frankly, um, which is scary. I think for all of us, it's scary to be exposed kind of regularly to it, to, you know, worry about bringing it home to our families and all of those types of things. So I, I feel like we're probably the group that will take it. We're kind, we're kind of the group that does that every time we get a new vaccine. Uh, across the board because we're there to help other people. And if we die, then we don't have anyone to help you uh, if you have this problem. So, you know, I think it's likely that all of us in the healthcare are going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's, I, I mean, I, I'm all for uh, a vaccine. I will take it. I will take anything that you tell me will make me so I don't feel like that. Um, because the stories that I have heard um, and the people who don't believe that this is happening or believe like the, the personal family members and people that I literally spoken to, I haven't been around them, but you know, listening to them tell me how miserable they were and how sick they were. I know that they didn't die, but I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to be there where I'm thinking I'm not, I'm not going to survive this. Um, and you know, it's the long-term things that long-term, um, uh, one of my friends has the lesions on her lungs and she's like still struggling. She, she got it in one of the first one in March. Mm -hmm. um, and she still she still struggles with taking a deep breath. Mm -hmm. She still coughs when she goes out in cold weather. Now she has the antibody antibodies, um, but it's getting up close to six months. They say your only antibodies only work for the first six months. You could maybe be reinfected. They don't know. Um, so she's she's scared, and she's like, "What does this mean for my long long term lung health?" Now her husband and her child and um, no one else in her family got sick. Mm -hmm. um, so she was just, it was her and she got it very, very bad. And she's worried about those, those cling, those hanger honors type of things. Right. And I think that's what scares a lot of people too, is even if you don't get it, you don't die or you don't get hospitalized. What are the long-term uh, effects? We just, we don't know. And there's no way in anyone in your field to really know. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're learning things, I think all the time. Um, and we are seeing a sort of a length of sort of post-infectious, the actual phase of illness is gone. Uh, the system is still struggling. You're still fighting something that is inside of the body that's either creating fatigue or dysfunction uh, or both, a combination, depending on who you are. And we're, we don't know how long the antibodies last. We don't know how robust, how effective they are when you are potentially re-exposed. We do know that this virus, like all viruses, will change a little bit as it moves through people. Uh, as it spreads, all viruses shape shift their design a little bit, and this one is doing the same thing. So can you get exposed to a different strain of this virus and then get sick with similar symptoms? We think that's likely. We have seen a couple of cases of that already. Um, so there's a handful of that happening. Um, so we just don't, we have no idea what your antibodies look like, how good they are, how long they last, whether they give you some sort of protection, you know, immunity longer term or, or not. And yeah. that, that's the interesting part about the vaccine though as well, because we're doing vaccines so much earlier, so much faster than we've ever done them before. We don't know that the vaccine will do that for you either. We don't know if it produces antibodies, how many they produce, how robust they are, will they protect you from reinfection you know, we, we don't know yet. That, yeah. so there's a lot of still very unknown. I mean, we're still nine months into this exposure. So, I mean, there's still just the learning curve is so steep in medicine right now. We're almost every day finding something new that we can do that's helping, you know, just turn the dial a little bit, you know, to a, a better, finer tuned treatment plan that is helping people improve in a more rapid level. Uh, we're seeing mortality numbers drop, you know, our original numbers in the ICUs, if you were 
sick enough to need that type of care, you know, like 60% of the people in the ICUs were dying. At this point in the game, it's like 25%, 28% in some places. So we've cut that number in half. So we've learned a lot. Um, I just think there's a lot left to learn about it. We just don't know a lot of what's going to happen next. Yeah. Yeah. Courtney asks um, the effectiveness, um, and this is kind of what you just touched on. Does the effectiveness of the vaccine include the mutation rate, which is what you're saying is like you, they don't know what the mutation rate is. So they can't, they can't add that into the effectiveness. Right. And, and we've tried to target the virus has a pretty stable protein spike on its surface that we have targeted for the most part in the vast majority of these uh, vaccine developments. So we're hoping that that protein is not going to shape shift a whole lot. Um, even if we're kind of close, we can still target pretty decently with the immune system in the body. So there's a little bit of variance in, you know, at, in any level like that where the protein can shape shift, you know, but our immune system can shape shift a little bit as well. So we've got a little play on either corner uh, or on either side, if you will, vaccine versus body. Um, so we're hopeful that this is the protein spike that's going to stay here longer term because it seems to be the stable component. Um, so, but again, we don't know, how's it going to change this winter? So right now we're seeing large numbers happen in the Southern, you know, sort of hemisphere. When this thing comes back around in our winter in this next six to eight to 12 weeks, you know, how much of it has changed from being in that population and then re-rounding up to our population. It's very much like the flu every year. We watch this happen every season in the flu. We are literally trending the flu every single day of the year. It's just whether we're having illnesses occur in the Northern hemisphere or we're having illnesses occur in the Southern hemisphere. And I feel like we're gonna end up doing the same thing with the coronavirus. We're gonna end up watching this thing circle the globe year round, trying to decide how do we make a vaccine that will cover us more effectively and be more efficient in what it does to help us have some sort of immunity level um, that it helps us not get sick or as sick as we might if we didn't have one available. Yeah. And, you know, well, a really great way to not get sick is just to be as healthy as possible but before. Absolutely. That's okay. it. I mean, um, things that I have been doing, you know, I've been following the vitamin regimen that you gave us before, like the vitamin C, the vitamin D3. Mm -hmm. um, I've been using that. Um, and we have that on our website. Just That's just basic vitamin regulations. Obviously, you should speak to your own healthcare physician. Mm -hmm. But um, about what you should, what you should and shouldn't take. But you know, I've been doing that. I've been giving it to my kids. Um, they are so sick of gummy vitamins. I get them in the morning and at night, um, right before bed, because I've got two different shifts. Um, I'm really big on that. I've been taking the C60. Um, one of the things is my daughter got an ear infection. Um, my youngest, she's two. And at first, I panicked. Right, I didn't leave the house. I didn't go to the anywhere. I immediately told, didn't come to work. I called the doctor, took her over there because she started having a runny nose and a little fever. So she had the, um, she was, she's got antibiotics for that. But one of the things that I realized is that I magnawaved her um, while she was, you know, to help her because when she was congested with just that ear infection, um, it did make her feel better and it cleared up her head a little bit. So um, it made her, her body feel more relaxed. I think it's really hard for a two year old to not panic when they're, you know, have a stuffy nose, feel like that. Um, so I've been magnawaving as well, just to keep from getting sick because I've, you know, it's really helped with oxygenating my blood and to end and the uptake of those vitamins. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if you have access to a magnawaving machine or you, even if, uh, if you have one, a lot of people don't use it on themselves. It's like the cobbler's kids don't have shoes, right? You know, they don't treat themselves. And I will say there was times in my life where I did the same thing. I'd complain about my neck and be like, oh, well, yeah, I'll treat it in a minute. I'll treat it. But I'm so busy. I didn't. And I think that that's, you know, we got to take care of ourselves right now. Yeah. I, you know, I, we said this before, almost, I think on each, each webinar, it's your best defense is a really good offense. You have to stay as, as healthy as you can. You have to rest well. You have to be well hydrated. And then any of the supplements that can kind of aid any piece of the immune system structure that you can give it assistance with, it's going to be critical right now. If you don't have a really well-oiled machine, if you get exposed to this thing, your body, having never seen it before, will have a problem with it, period. Um, so it's just how big does the problem get? That's the problem with something new uh, or novel, as we call it. So you, you really do have to be careful about what you're doing. And I, I would agree with you. I mean, I try to magnawave every time I'm home. It is something that, that helps me feel better, you know, across the board. And if you if you have your own machine or you know someone who has a machine, uh, certainly on yourself. Don't hesitate. You know, I, I feel like that's one of the mo the best ways that your body can decrease some of the inflammation that we get just on a daily activity level 
some of the irritation that occurs. We, we demand a ton out of our physical structure all the time. And you have to have that repaired in order to really build on a healthy system. So anything you can do to make that better is great. I feel like MagnaWave is a strong, you know, sort of tool that you have in order to facilitate that. So Yeah, I agree. So that leads me into this. Um, this is this machine, and I'm going to send you one of these, Dr. Myers, because I want you to try it. So this is the Spiro Go. It's really hard to know which way. But look how thin it is. Look how small it is. That's awesome. Isn't it awesome? So it's, um, I love this. I, I mean, it is so, let me turn it on here. Um, it is awesome because it goes for 90 minutes. It's got the digital face plates. It is a digital machine, uh -huh. uh, but it runs with the two plugs like your Pulse Pro does and your Max. So it's got the same attachments. Um, but so it runs the same one so you can use it. But if you're on the go, like you don't take your machine with you when you travel for work because it's too, you have the two, you have the big units, but this is perfect because it, you can run it for 90 minutes yeah. um, or 30 minutes and people can use it. And it's a great on the go type of machine. It's so small. It could go, it could go on the overhead bin of the plane in your luggage. Yeah. You know? So I'm I'm really excited about it. It got it has um 10 settings at 20 intervals. And I know that's confusing, but if anybody has a question, please ask it um in the in the um chat here. We would want to answer your questions. We're gonna do some giveaways today, so please comment and ask questions. But this Bureau Go has 10 settings and 20 intervals, meaning it goes from one, 1 1.52, 2.53. So like you have an, a half step in there, and it goes as low as like the highest setting on a beamer. So like the you know, the low power units or the B2 that we have. But then it goes as high as uh, nearly the semi five. So you really are able to still feel it. So if somebody is looking for a lot of our practitioners are doing rent to rents where they're renting machines out to people. So if you are looking for a um, if you're looking to rent a machine and you want to you know, try MagnaWave, please contact your local practitioner. You can find it on the map. And we are going to have these available for the uh, rent to rent, you know, rental units for the practitioners as well. But I'm going to send you one. <laughs> I thought you could try and take it with you when you travel. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and see what you think. Um, let's see. I think we have yeah. some questions. Um, so let's see. Courtney says, basically, it's about mi mitigating the SX as much as possible. Yes. Yeah, so excess means symptoms uh, in medical lingo. And, and it really is. It, it, it's about, you know, it's a virus. We can't really give you medicine that gets rid of the virus. We are looking at almost always symptomatic care. Uh, and that's true for all viruses. So you know, where is your body's health condition at the time that you're infected with this virus? And that sort of predicts what your course of illness is going to look like. How sick do you get? How bad do you feel? How long do you stay sick? All of those things are going to depend on how healthy you are to, to sort of, you know, at the initial baseline exposure. So, you know, again, doing something like MagnaWave, getting good rest, getting hydrated, you know, doing the supplements to keep the body physically sort of geared up and ready for whatever may be coming next for you. That is critical. So, yeah. you know, and with especially with MagnaWave, if you can increase blood flow, if you can hyperoxygenate a tissue area, all injury, all inflammation, all mm -hmm. cell destruction stops right then. And that sets your body up into a position where healing can occur. And that is where everyone stays healthy. It's right in that sweet spot where that can happen. And MagnaWave puts you there, period. Yeah. Just PMF any type of pulse electromagnetic frequency. It's, do it's, it. it's the way to do it. Yeah, I agree. I think that I've had several people who have gotten sick with COVID and they were just really happy that to have a machine right. um, because it did mitigate, made them feel better and helped with their sleep and some of their symptoms. Obviously, I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying that that's going to happen. It's not going to cure anybody of anything. I'm never saying that. But they were able to, um, you know, take some of those aches and pains and they felt like it really did um, help them in that time. And I, I, that's like, like I said, with my daughter, I magnified myself. Um, when I find it's kind of like, I like to explain it like this, like brushing your teeth. Like you don't start brushing your teeth after you have a cavity. You, you, you brush your teeth so you don't get cavities. And that's exactly what you should be using, doing with MagnaWave. Um, Kate, she's one of our practitioners. She said, the Spiro Go is so awesome. I have it by my couch or bed so I can use it daily. I have been so bad about not MagnaWaving myself because I'm too tired to pull out my Pulse Pro just for me. Now I've been using it every single day and it's amazing. That's right. That's the best part of this for somebody who has a big machine. This is the perfect home use machine. If you are looking to get a unit 
and and really be able to treat yourself to keep you and your family and just not run a business just have something at your house that is comfortable and works well and is lightweight that's what this is fantastic for just keep you healthy keep you and your family healthy yeah yeah it's, that that's really the prevention is what we're talking about right so what anything that you can do to protect your body anything you can do to help position it correctly you know, we'll, we'll put you in a better position for you to encounter the things that we do all the time in our daily life, right? So we encounter viruses every single day, all year. They are more highly concentrated in the winter because most of them survive more effectively in cold environments. Um, and we tend to cluster, right? We tend to spend more time inside, around in, uh, people in tighter spaces for longer periods of time. So we tend to have more exposures in the wintertime to these viral components. So but what is it that makes you get it and not somebody else get it? And that sometimes boils down to just how healthy are you? Just baseline, how good is your body today, you know, type of a thing. So prevention is, is where it's at. So if you can just plug this thing in and sit down and do a project or, or veg in front of the television for whatever time it is, or you're reading or whatever, you're sleeping and it just turns itself off by itself, you know, then that's that's what you need to do because then you get that treatment, your body gets that therapy, and it regears itself into that healthy setting. So super important. Yeah, that's I'm I'm really excited about it. I think that I've learned so much about mental health as well during this period of time. Um, a lot of people are struggling. I mean, it has been a really really bad year for most people, and even if you are you still working and you have a good job or your family, it is just mentally and physically it it affects you, and that hurts your immune system as well. Um, that's one of the things reasons that I've also we've I've I've been pushing the brain tap. Yeah. Um, because that stress level, that mental stress, that anxiety, um, it is all consuming sometimes. I mean, there is just days, and I think every single person listening to this can imagine, feels this way. I don't think I'm alone. Where you wake up and you are just, it is, you start watching the news or reading what's going on and somebody's sick and you're worried, oh my gosh, do they have COVID? Whatever. I mean, it is, it's overwhelming. And um, I found using the brain tap, especially on my children, because this is a really hard time on kids. Oh, yeah. And they do have kids. It is a hard discussion to have with them what's going on. They don't understand why they can't have their birthday. They don't understand why they're not in school. Even if they understand it from the perspective of like, there's a virus and they know they can't, they don't really get, it's just hard for children to get that. Why don't we just do it? Right? Like, you know, come yeah. on, you know, mom. So I have found that using this on my kids and with myself has really helped me with my sleep and to kind of kick those bad days away quicker because mm -hmm. uh, it takes you out of your head. Even when you're magna waving and stuff, people are thinking of other things or watching TV, they get distracted. So physically they're feeling good, but that mental problem is still there. And I think it's, it's not being addressed enough or talked about. Yeah, I mean, we've certainly seen an increase in domestic violence. We've seen an increase in the numbers in, in certainly the pediatric emergency department where kids are coming in uh, with, you know, thoughts of suicide, thoughts of depression. We've seen a higher number of these kids require inpatient management than we've ever seen before. And so I, I feel like kids struggle with this in a different way than adults do. We don't always kind of put together or piece together like what I'm worried about is often very different than what they are worried about, uh, interestingly enough. So, but it's still stressful for them. Their entire lives have changed. They don't see their friends. They don't go to school. They don't, you know, nothing they're doing is normal. And when the adults in their lives are stressed, and we all are, you know, on some level, it's either we're worried about being sick or we're worried about someone we know that's gotten sick or our jobs are changing, our finances may be jeopardized. You know, everything has shifted a little bit. And then you trap me in my home with maybe people that I've gotten along with really well when I have time away, but now I'm with them all the time. You know, I mean, it's just, I think it's hard. It's just a tough, it's a tough space to be. So, you know, using the MagnaWave, it's, it's FDA approved for anxiety and depression. So we're changing chemistry. We're literally shifting the structure of the enzyme production in order to be more stable in our thinking processes uh, across the board. And when you look at the brain tap, the NOM piece of material. I mean, that device just literally puts science in the It is looking at frequency, it is looking at isochronic beats, it's looking at binaural beats. So it's leading you down from a visual frequency to an auditory uh, sort of talking you through a path, which we all know works. Uh, and then it's combining specific sounds that will entrain the brain to think and feel a certain way. Hard to beat when it comes to just 
an easy 10, maybe 20 minute program that can shape shift how you think almost immediately. So it really does. It it's really great. does. It does. It's, it's, a, it's an incredible device. I mean, the visualizations. So if everybody, if, uh, the thing that got me and I've started really realizing the power of this is when, if everybody right now listening to this could just close their eyes for a second and imagine that they are, you know, in their kitchen and they are picking out a big juicy lemon out of the, wherever they keep their lemons and they, they're slicing it open and it's so, so much juice in that lemon. And then they cut a little, they cut a segment and they just place it into their mouth and take a bite. If you did that, if you closed your eyes and kind of walked through that with me, mm -hmm. I guarantee your mouth watered. Like you were taking a bite, like your brain has such physical responses on your body it really could change everything if you and that's what this is it is music it is classes it's smoking cessation it's weight loss it's anxiety it's got uh red and white lights here if you haven't seen this and it's got lights in the headset um and it's oh yeah i'm doing a product here we go there's the lights and then it's got some in the the headset I don't want to break it, but inside there and just with those lights alone, they've noticed a 30 percent reduction in anxiety and stress with just the lights without the binaural beats and the music. So the lights alone help with that relaxation. We are surrounded by blue light all day when we're on in front of our computers, especially our kids. Yeah. Um, doing their online school and they're not used to it. And that, those red and white light combination there um, is beneficial to helping change and, you know, get that, that the negative effects of those other lights and the other things around us off. So if you have not tried the brain tap, we do have it on our website. I, I think that managing your stress is just as important as taking your vitamins and working out and sleeping right. Like I, it really physically is going to take a toll on your body. So stress in our systems is literally one of the biggest killers. Um, you could be the healthiest eater. You can sleep great. You can drink nothing but, you know, like water and great things from that perspective. You can, you can be on track with everything. But the thing that will end up killing you is stress. Because stress takes our body out of normal metabolism chemistry, sort of healthy cell structure chemistry. And it shifts us into what we call in medicine the fight fright scenario where all of our norepinephrine, epinephrine, these really aggressive chemicals show up to help us deal with something um, that is, you know, life threatening on a level or it used to be for us. And that, you know, throw back to the very old times when we were being chased by lions or things that we were trying to eat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I haven't been chased by a lion in a while. Yeah, I haven't either, but I'll tell you what, there's a lot of stress in my job and in my life. Right. So every yeah. time I walk into a travel room and try to figure out what's going on and how to fix it, you know, my stress levels rise. And so, we, we deal and encounter with stress in a subtle way now, that, but our body responds exactly the same. So we end up in this very acidic environment where our cells get damaged. They get the DNA as it is, it is replicating, does something wrong. And so we end up with a bad cell or two. You know, we're, we're going to have breakdown from the acid that's remaining in the system across the board. You cannot heal anything in acid. And not only that, you are so much more likely to become sick with whatever you encounter in your day when you're in that acidity, uh, that it, it's impossible to avoid getting, uh, I think, things that you're exposed to. So shifting out of stress is a massive player in health across the board. You know, and again, things like PMF, where we're spinning electrons, we're moving DNA into healing cycles, where we're taking oxygen to places that need it, where we're really, you know, smooth muscle dilating, where we're putting out a chill factor, we're putting out nitric oxide, telling the whole body to slow down, calm down, do what you're supposed to do. You're not in that situation where you got to run anymore. You know, so gearing the body into physical health is just massive. And if you can train the brain to get out of that space as well, because the brain's the, the massive culprit. You can be as relaxed as you want to be. You can be in your hot tub, you know, doing whatever you do to chill out. And your brain can just be spinning about your day or tomorrow or what do you have to do next or what am I going to do about. So if you can't bring the brain down, uh, the physiology of the body is not going to be as good as it could be. So your brain health is really important. So treating your head with the brain tap, treating your head with the MagnaWave, both things together, phenomenal results, realistically. Yeah. yeah, the physical and mental, like, you know, when you wake up from a nap and you you feel like refreshed and you've had that, like when you've had real REM sleep, what I've noticed is that using the brain tap and I've been using it with the Spiro Go at my house, like just for about 15 minutes or sometimes 30 minutes when I have a few minutes at my house. And what I've noticed is that I come out of it like 
almost a totally different person than when I went in to, yeah. to doing it. Like it really, it's not, it's like, oh my, you just woke up from like the best, you know, meditation. And I'm not a very good meditating type of person. I don't sit still very long. Um, I'm a little high energy. So mm -hmm. this is a way for me to really shut it down uh, because I'm the person that's like sitting on the magnet wave with my cell phone all the way out here trying to still use it because I don't want it to be ruined, but I also got to do another thing. Right. Um, this really shuts that down. I've noticed with my kids, it's helped with their behavior when I see them getting a little riled up. Um, it's really, you know, it's a, just a really great thing to add to um, like your wellness routine at home. And so we're going to do some um, special programs over the next two or three weeks where we're going to bundle some of these really cool modalities that we have together for people for the holidays. Nice. Um, so everybody should look out for that. We do have um, somebody who asked, let's see. Uh, I thought there was one up there. Somebody asked if you have any, oh, here we go. Uh, Aaron said, I read a lot of different thoughts on treatment times. Do you have a recommendation for boosting immune system? So I think she means like treatment times on a machine. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, pretty good data on the immune system and what we do with it. So we're it, it almost depends a little bit on the timing of the day that you're doing this, because our immune system cycles, we do different things in the day than we do at night when we sleep and rest. So we actually almost get a little more pro inflammatory at night. The body becomes immunologically more aggressive because we're repairing things. We're looking for what's wrong and we're trying to kick it out and fix it. Um, during the day, we get a little more anti-inflammatory. So we're kind of a little bit chiller in the, in the daytime period. And when we look at when we're encountering viruses or bacteria, the things that we recognize as foreign, not supposed to be in us, that's when the immune system begins to engage those things and, and, and develop a strategy to help protect us from those things. So with MagnaWay, with PEMF, what we're doing is we're ramping up uh, commonly a combination of the pro-inflammatory and the anti-inflammatory. So we want the body to be assertive, but we don't want it to get too aggressive. It's kind of like saying, if I had somebody that smashed the window in my car, I would want the local sheriff or police department to help me. I really don't need the FBI. Like I don't need that level of involvement. So keeping the body appropriate is really where we want to go. Uh, and that's what MagnaWave can help do. So it's going to balance some of the up and the down, the inflammatory and the pro-inflammatory timeframes um, that where our body is supposed to kick in and use. So most of the data that I've read through will tell me that if we're doing 10 to 20 minutes of treatment on the body itself, that's what's most effective. We have lymph nodes all over. Uh, we have thousands of them. They look like little jelly bean sized structures that we filter fluid through in the whole system. Uh, so using either a body pad or like big loops that we do, the, the trunk, the sort of uh, gut area would be helpful. Uh, we have a lot of our lymph structures in our neckline. So butterflying the neck would be useful. If you did, you know, you know, a session of 10 minutes uh, on the neck, you did a session of either. Yes, exactly. So something butterflying around or if you have a loop and you could wrap the loop around, uh, you could do the body mat down the trunk or a large loop or angel wings, whatever you'd like to use, you know, from that perspective. But yeah, 10 minutes in a location would be great to help kick the immune system just into help, you know, identifying uh, where its balance is and resetting the balance into the appropriate level. Because we, we need both sides of this process to work efficiently for us. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, what I found has been doing exactly what you're saying. I try to do like 20 minutes in the morning, 20 to 30 minutes in the morning mm -hmm. um, on a comfortable setting. That's why it's really important to have a machine that you can change the settings because mm -hmm. like you said, during the day, your body changes and what may be comfortable um, in the morning, you might want something stronger or less, you know, whatever, as your body kind of um, deals with the stress and what's happened throughout your day. And so I like to do about 20 to 30 minutes in the morning on, on, on a comfortable setting, nothing that's like shaking. And then I like to do the same thing at night. Um, and I sometimes I'll do like the upper body and then I'll do like the soles of my feet at night. Like I really like um, that that point in the bottom of the foot. Like it, it really does relax me mentally. Um, so I, I try to do that as well. So I think that what, you know, the thing is, is just doing it. You know, finding the time to do it, taking your vitamins. I try to take my vitamins about 30 to 45 minutes before um, I magnawave. Mm -hmm. And I've yeah. noticed that it, it, my stomach doesn't get as sick either. Yeah. I mean, if you take a lot of vitamins at one time, I think anyone who's done that, if you, have, if you haven't eaten close to that time frame, you, you do realize that you're like, ooh, that just doesn't make me feel awesome. You know, it's not like normal if I just eat something 
food wise, the, the vitamins tend to interact a little bit. Yeah. Different. You know, we do know with MagnaWave, you know, anytime that we increase blood flow, we're going to change metabolism. So, you know, being able to time it is, is helpful. So if you can absorb a little more efficiently, or a little more effectively, those things, you know, then, then that's helpful. There's a lot of, if you ask your regular doctor, well, should I take vitamins? They're going to half laugh and say, well, you know, sometimes it just means you have the most expensive urine, you know, that, that anyone can have because most of the vitamins, the vitamins that we don't require or don't absorb, we will lose through our urinary tract system. So, you know, they're kind of like, eh, you can do it or don't do it. But if we can't absorb them, then, then that's where they become effective and our body can then allocate each little piece of them that we need in order to keep our immune system strong and healthy. If you're not absorbing them, if you're just dumping them, then they're really not that helpful. So anything yeah. you can do, again, to make your, your gut more healthy, uh, you know, good water and hydration, lots of fiber, the things that your body kind of needs in order to do that is going to be great, you know. And, and again, MagnaWave can help facilitate that. Smooth muscle dilation, better blood flow, better oxygenation. Those cells are going to do their jobs more efficiently. So yeah. absorbing things, they're going to do it in a better fashion for you. Um, you're absolutely right. I do want to show you guys this. I'm going to see if you guys, if you can see this, I know you see, this is the brain tap app that you can um, get for the whole, um, you can buy it from MagnaWave and you get, if you buy it from us, you get this, you see right there where it says MagnaWave. Um, if I'm going to click in there for you guys. And we actually have, because Kate uh, Backus is saying it's super interested in the brain tap. Sounds like it'd be some additional avenues for the business side as well. We do have a, a business. Um, you can do a business with it. But one of the coolest things is this it says MagnaWave demo right there. Um, it, what it does is it plugs into that headset and it has the binaural beats and the music, but it also has the um the speech that explains what the magnawave is doing at the cellular level to your body so if you are using this in your business and you decide to get a business um membership with the brain tag what you could do is you, while somebody's using like if you have a spiro go or you have a smaller unit you have them sitting over there in one area and they could put those on and you don't have to do the whole explanation of what's going on they get this physical and mental explanation and relaxation at the same time so i've seen a lot of people who are like oh i want to what do you what is that magnet wave thing and they're like hey sit down put these these on listen to this and and i'll show you and it's really a great way to um kind of a lot of people are nervous about that elevator speech or what, you know, it does all of that for you. And it kind of explains it in a really easy to understanding way and relaxing way. So, um, Kate, yes, you'll love it. You, how often do you guys use it? Dr. Marsh, you guys use the, um, brain tap. We do. Uh, we use it at home for our own use and, and Verlinda does almost all of her clients engage the brain tap as well. So it's just so effective, you know, when you can really, again, because we're combining two things, we're relaxing the body and we're putting it in a state of health. And in sort of that nitric oxide healing phase with the pulsed electromagnetic frequencies. But then again, you have to engage the brain. If I can't convince the brain otherwise, you will just get straight back into the, the physiology that you were in before we treated you. So, you know, adding in this binaural beat, isochronic level, you know, lighting frequencies that can shape shift chemistry on an interesting level and then doing a guided meditation, massive. Most people have trouble shutting their head off, especially right now. So, yeah. and, and if you're not good at, at monk style, sitting quietly and not thinking about anything, which I don't know anyone can, who can really do that. I don't care how long you've been meditating. It's a challenge. You know, that's why everyone says it's okay if your mind water, wanders, just bring it back. That's because everyone's mind does that. But in a guided meditation, you're, you're experiencing something completely different. You're being led down a visualization that you choose the theme of, and you are completely engaged. You're completely present the whole time because you can't help it. Your brain through the, the music with the isochronic and the binaural beating comes to a specific brave wave, wave pattern, you know, and then through the guided visual med meditations, you are just, you're not going to be able to be distracted from that. So it's massive to shut the head off. You know, and I feel like it's it's just like you said earlier, Lane. It's like a really refreshing nap because most of us don't get away from our head. You know, we're constantly stressed, we're constantly thinking, we're constantly moving the wheels. You know, so being able to turn that off even for a brief period of time is huge for most people. It is, and these are some of the other things they have. I'm going to show you again. They have stress-free me, optimal health, worry-free me, weight wellness, children and learning, which I love. Uh, wake up, you know, help you ooh, help you wake up, help you go to sleep. Like, look, there are so many different ones. 
that, that come with the app. You can buy it for a year. You're licensing the music, basically. There's the MagnaWave, uh, Brain Trap Retreat, Intro to Brain Tapping. Um, and then there's, I mean, this is just, look, this is just, that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's the ones that I use. But look, this is all in there. It's got a different languages, life improvement, nutrition, pain relief. I mean, everything. It's really got all of the issues that are going on in your life. Like there is not something I you can't find. Um, I mean, look, business and finance. There you go. <laughs> I mean, that's, it's great. There are so many things um, that are really important that you could get from this relaxation wise, but then, you know, educating yourself and growing in your business and growing in your family is all there. So that mind body experience, we've hit, we've said it over and over again, but it is using the brain tap with something like the Spiro Go. It's easy. You could take it anywhere in the world that you're going. You could take it on an airplane. You could take it um, if you're, you know, going out of town, you could use it with your friends. You could use it with your dog. It's just a really great way to focus on wellness because that's what we all need to be doing right now. Mm -hmm. Really, We really do. Um, so Christina Hayes, is the Soul Machine FDA approved for anxiety, depression, or just the brain tap machine? So Christina, PEMF as a modality, right? Dr. Myers is FDA approved. Um, machine approval is different. Like that is a different process. So um, right now, the Soul, we all of our machines are in the process of getting what's called FDA cleared. We are working towards that goal. But PEMF has been shown to reduce um, anxiety and depression. And that's what that's what we do. Am I right saying that, Dr. Myers? Yes, that's correct. So the the studies have been done with PEMF use in depression. In fact, we're going to do a blog this week. Um, I'm, we're working on tuning it up in order to be able to pu publish it. So uh, yes, all of the PEMF studies have shown that the needle moves in depression. It improves symptoms. It improves body physical symptoms. It improves brain chemistry. Uh, and therefore, in the end, we end up with less depressive symptoms across the board. So Yes. And they're using it actually in lots of the psychology, psychiatry settings. Uh, they're calling it transcranial, transmagnetic, transmagnetic stimulation. stimulation, depending on the place that you are using it in. Um, so it's the same technology, just with a different name. Uh, but yes, the, the pulsed electromagnetic frequency is what has been approved. Yes. And then machine approval is, is secondary. And that's what that's what we're working towards right now. There is no high power PMF machine in the United States that is FDA approved. It's called FDA cleared. Um, it's what machines actually fall under. And all of the FDA cleared devices are low power PMF machines. So there are several of us that are blazing the trail. Well, actually, only two of us that are blazing the trail towards getting that. Um, but that is because we have clinical trials, third party safety testing, all of these things that the FDA requires, good manufacturing practices. Um, we have a list on our website, I believe, it's, and it's, I, I think AOPP has one that's similar. If you're looking and shopping for a PMF machine, there are some questions that you need to be asking um, the companies that you want to buy for if they are doing any of these things, because it's just important that if, you know, everybody, you have something, you're buying a, a product that is working towards, you know, these processes, because, you um, if they're not, then you don't know what you're getting and they're not, they don't have that, that safety testing. And it, that's, what's more important, um, knowing you have a safe device, but PMF works. Um, okay. Somebody did ask, uh, does MagnaWave offer rent to own on the brain tap? Janet, right now we do not offer rent to own, um, on the brain tap. Um, I don't know if we could do that in the future, but I, I think we, we, we are, we are not offering it currently. Um, Using the brain tap in your business, how often do a, does a client have to use it for success for, say, weight loss? Now, uh, Dr. Myers, I heard Verlinda back there. Does she ever treat anybody for weight loss? <laughs> have you treated anyone for weight loss? Yeah, one of my clients. <clears throat> one of my clients bought the machine. Mary no. bought the no. machine, and she's using it for weight loss. Yeah. So ongoing, uh, one of her clients did buy the, the brain tap specifically for that. Um, so I, we're trending, I think, just to see what kind of results we can get. Uh, so yeah, what did yeah. you, you? I mean, there's. It looks like there's thirteen class, thirteen um, like sessions for the the weight loss. So I mean, if I was gonna start this right now, um, uh, Tracy, what I would do for weight loss is if I had it a client that I would go ahead and schedule them out for thirteen sessions, like one on Monday, one on Wednesday, one on Friday, if possible, right. or two a week, and do a session each time uh, with the brain tap and the magnet wave. Um, and if I know you have the LZR, Tracy, so I would use that as well. That's huge. I mean, it took me from not 
as terrible stubborn fat on my stomach that I thought was never going to go away. I just accepted it as having three kids and I was going to have this forever, um, even though I was losing weight and getting in shape. And it took off a lot of that stubborn like fat and scarring. So I would recommend, you know, LZR, MagnaWave, brain tap during the whole thing. That, that would be my my weight loss. That's what I did. And it worked. Um, I lost. Oh, God. Um, almost 40 pounds since no last November. So about 35 pounds, um, a little bit more than that now. So, I mean, that's almost three dress sizes. It was a big change. I started eating healthy, but when I lost that first 20, I couldn't get over that hump, that last 10 pounds. Like I just could not get it off. And I just could, it was all, I was losing the weight, like my little arm, you know, like I needed to lose it in my stomach. <laughs> and I found with that LZR that I was able to almost target which fat cells were going out. And then I, you know, used the magnet wave to really flush them out. It it worked for me. Um, and I I actually had a woman testimonial the other day. She messaged me on Facebook and she was like, I she said, I've been doing this. This woman came in last Monday. We've seen a four inch difference in two weeks. And I was like, What? Like yeah. that's crazy. Like she has, she is amazed by it. Yeah. Because part of it, the PEMF is moving inflammatory irritation, inflammation stuff. So we, we hold a certain volume of, you know, just swelling because the body has problems with cells that it's, you know, unable to repair or fix. And so if you can do a light source like the white and the red LZR, you know, application where you're activating some of the cellular metabolism, you're changing some of that stubborn cell structure that, you know, you're, you're talking about. And then you can minimize the inflammatory cycles that are occurring and that extra little swelling that happens just on the baseline because our bodies are dealing with it through the PEMF, then that, that's going to shape shift you physio physiology wise uh, and then physically because of that. But a lot of, a lot of weight and weight loss is mental. It is a subconscious game that we're playing with ourselves. Most of us have some kind of weird pattern of eating that we're either rewarding or punishing or we're happy, we're sad. There's something mentally going on with the patterns of our food intake, the timing of that food intake, what it might be that we're seeking. Uh, so if we can shape shift some of that mental component as well, then it's, it's like a trifecta. You're just going to escalate, you know, from a massive perspective, what the body's capable of doing. Brain training is so valuable. What you think, how you think it, when you think it, critical and what your body actually does. Yeah. You know, I heard this, I was, I was uh, watching a webinar with a doctor. I can't remember who it was the other day. And he was explaining brain entrainment a little bit. And he said, you know, energy is flown between like you feel other people's energy in ways like your brain wants to be on the same wavelengths. Yeah. Um, at, like it wants to get in rhythm to mm -hmm. like other people or, or the sounds. It really, it, it wants to do it like naturally. So that's why using these certain uh, rhythms like the alpha, the beta, the theta, using these, these brain rate waves is going to get your brain in the sleep rhythm without medication. It's going to get your brain in the relaxation, the energy. And that's what I think is so amazing. I never thought of it. Like your body wants to get on rhythm and wants to be in these places, but it sometimes it can't. And in using these the things like the brain tap, um, what really allows your brain it immediately starts matching those rhythms. Right when you start listening, your brain goes into those rhythms as well. It's yeah, crazy. It is, and I think that's part of why we're having so much mental stress right now. Is that we're kind of designed to be connected. We, you know, you, you feel that you, you, we talk about the crowd mentality all the time and whether that's a positive thing or a negative thing, it depends on the situation, but we're kind of designed to be connected people. And right now we're very, we're trying to isolate, which doesn't work real well for most of us, you know, whether you're truly extroverted, and hundreds of people around you, or whether you're kind of that introvert that likes to put the toe out and be around people, but then likes to hide a little bit and rejuvenate, you know, whatever, wherever you are on that spectrum, we're still designed to be connected. And so, you know, getting your head out of that sort of isolated space, getting it into something that helps the chemistry flow better, get your brain moving in the direction that it should, creates a positive thought pattern for you. I mean, all of that is just so valuable. And again, MagnaWave can do it, BrainTap can do it, but the combination of the two, kind of magical, frankly. It really is. So, um, okay, we got a couple more questions. Let's see, somebody was asking about um, what are, are we suggesting to charge? So I'm assuming you're talking about the brain tab and we do have information about that in the practitioner portal. 
really depends on what you're charging for your manual treatment. Um, Aaron does have a, a, a standalone pricing that she was, Aaron and Teresa were recommending. And then like, you know, using is like, if you've already paying for the manual, then it may be $10 or $15 on top of what that manual session is. Um, that's the way we recommend doing it, but it, it kind of your personal pricing, you kind of got to work that out. So um, there's a link. Alex is asking about the brain, you know, specifics on the pricing of the brain tap system. It is, um, there is a link on the, um, website right above in the comments uh, there, Alex, with all the pricing and information. And if you follow that link, there is a 15 day free trial um, that you can start now from your cell phone. So you can listen to some of those mu some of that music and some of those classes. It's not everything, but it's a selection of some of the most popular ones. So even if you don't have the headset, you can put on regular headphones and listen to some of them. So you get an idea of what that music is. And that's beneficial. Um, it really is. Th these same, this same music can be used with our vibration oasis and our wave oasis. So um, as long as the PMF isn't turned all the way up on the wave oasis, you can use the, the brain tap and it will power that vibration. And the same thing goes for the um, vibration chair. I mean, all of these modalities work so well together. Yeah. You know, some people like one more than the other. That's great. I have found that the, having the actual science behind the red light and the PMF and the white light is there's actual physical, there's science there. And that's what makes it so amazing. Um, but it also is just, you will see such physical change and mental change so quickly. So, and that's what we need right now. We are, you all, if you have a last minute question, ask it for Dr. Myers. We need to do this more often. Amanda. We do. We totally do. I miss you. And you know, what's weird. It's weird to see people without masks on. Right. It's like, true. It is. I get on a call and right. I'm like, oh, look, there's somebody else's face. <laughs> right. I know. I, I, it's interesting. I worry about these little, the babies, the infants that are now, you know, the one and the two-year-olds that are just seeing everyone in masks. It's, it, you know, you learn so much adaptively when you're growing up that the mask, I think, is it's going to change some things a little bit. It's it's funky. Well, but my you, daughter asked for being in a mask now, and I'm so used to seeing everyone in a mask now. It's kind of odd yeah. to know. <laughs> I mean, my two-year-old will get in the car, and she, the other day, was like, no, mom, mom, wait. And we're pulling out, and I go, what? She goes, I forgot my mask. Like, because she, I mean, if we're leaving the house, she knows she has to have it. I mean, she puts yeah. it on every time she gets out of the car, even if we're just yeah. going into my mom's house. Yeah. You know, she's like, oh, I put my mask. I'm like, wait, wait, okay, fine, whatever. You want to wear it, wear it, right? Like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to discourage it, but she she is all about it. I haven't taken her. I will tell you this. And this is this is weird. Um, and you you understand kids. So you're going to get it. But like a pediatrician, you're a pediatrician. But she doesn't like to be away from the house. Like and I tell you, I've, I've only taken her to the grocery store like maybe twice. And that was since the pandemic. I have not taken her in nine months to really anywhere public whatsoever other than like a, outside to a park or yeah. um. I mean, we haven't been to the mall. We haven't been to, I don't, I don't think we've been anywhere. Honestly, I can't even think of one place that was not our fam, just our family. Um, so when we leave, it's like a huge deal for her. Like huge. She's like, oh my gosh, you know, I, with the other two, I was all over the world. Like I was running around. They went everywhere. I was hanging up. The one was hanging on my shoulders. We went through Kroger. Like now it's like there, she would, she, I don't know what she would do. I'm interested oh. to see if I took her in and put her in the stroll in the thing at Kroger. It, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's totally different lives. Yeah. Totally different experiences, totally different things that are normal or not normal. You know? Yeah. It, it's interesting the way that we're, it's going to be interesting to see what kids are doing, you know, and, five years so that were raised in their very early sort of development, you know, years uh, while this is going on because we're yeah, just I hope I didn't screw her up too bad. so very differently. I don't know if it'll screw them up. I just think it's going to be different. You know, they're, they're going to have different interests or maybe different things that they're okay with and not okay with. It's going to be, yeah, who knows? She's comfortable being at home. I remember the other two being like, can we go to the zoo? Can we go here? Like we were constantly on the go and she like doesn't expect to do anything yeah. other than play in her backyard and, and stay at her house. So, um, <laughs> It's just weird. It is. <laughs> okay, so thank you guys so much, um, Dr. Myers. Okay, everybody that commented today, we'll pick we'll pick two people from the list. We'll pick a number. Um, Chris and the marketing team will pick two a number, pull two people, and send some uh, um, fun gift baskets to you guys. So we'll send you some swag. Thank you for participating. Don't forget to turn it tune in. We, Chris, we do have office hours Tuesday. Office hours is at noon. Noon Eastern Standard Time, sometimes my dad moves it. So join my dad, Pat Zemer, Tuesday um, at noon Eastern Standard Time for his office hours. A lot of great content. And then we will have another one of these, hopefully in between Thanksgiving and Christmas, where yeah. we can get back together and maybe eat leftovers and talk to you all 
a little bit more. I love leftovers. I it's mean, good. I'm still going to cook. I'm still going to cook, even if we don't have it. Okay. Yeah, we're cooking. It's just a smaller, yeah, very small container of fruit. Yeah. Yeah, we're cooking. I'm still making a turkey. Um, even if I have like four people there, uh, we'll figure it out. Anyways, thank you guys. Thank you, Dr. Myers. And we will see you next time, everyone. Yay, bye.